Hi, Simon here. I've been asked by many of you to do a tutorial on my contours map animation, um, like FUI animation, future user interface, and I sort of spend a bit of time in lockdown to put one together for you. It took a lot longer than I thought it would actually. It's a lot harder, so hats off to you who do this for a living anyway. But here you go, this is my take on contours in After Effects just using trap code form and fractal noise. What we're going to do is make a new HD comp and I'm just going to call it Contours Landscape. You'll notice during this tutorial that I'll label everything because it always makes it easier when you come back to it in a few months time. Okay, let's make a new solid. I'm going to call this form floor X. This is for the grid. Oh, didn't make the solid full size of the comp. Hang on a sec. There we go. And what we're going to do here is add form. So we're going to make the grid floor plane in the X axis. So X, Y, Z individual. The reason I make everything individual is because I like to animate stuff coming on and going off again. I'm not going to animate the grid as such coming on, but for, it's always I've always found it good practice to do it because it will look cooler later on. So if we just follow my typing. At the moment we can't see a great deal, so we might as well bung a camera in and get it roughly to the level I want. I normally start with a 50mm lens uh, with depth of field because that gives us a good compromise between field of view and amount of depth of field. So we're just going to move the camera up, change our viewport, tilt the camera down. Try and slide it into position. Change our focus point to the center. There's a reason why we're doing this. Whack up the depth of field. One thing we'll notice here, the particles are quite big, so we're just going to bring these down. Let's lose all the, we're going to lose the feather on all our particles. We don't need feather. Modify the focus point again. And we're chucking in a null because we're going to parent the camera to the null just so we've got a constant, subtle rotation in the scene. Oh yeah, make the camera null 3D. And I'm just centering the null at the center of the screen, so when we do when we rotate the null, it will just rotate around the same point. Just keep getting the rotation now. What we're going to do now is duplicate this floor layer. And uh, rename it. Z. For obvious reasons. And we're just going to swap these particles. Ten in that one and 250 in Z. So we should have a nice grid. Oink. There we go. And we're going to duplicate this layer again because I like to have um, points where the lines cross. Just adds a little bit of extra. All dots. And in here, the main difference being particles in Z is 10. So it's just a dot, as you can see on the screen, at every intersection. But we're just going to whack the particle size up to 2 so you can see them a bit better. Great. Nice. Now we've got a nice, cool looking floor. 
Now we're going to make the fractal noise layer that's going to drive the landscape and the contour lines. I'm going to call this pro noise as in procedural noise because I can't be asked to type out procedural. So the new solid, same size as the comp. I'm going to call this noise terrain. Trying to find the fractal noise. Oh, where is it? There it is. So what we're going to do is change the fractal type to terrain. Make it spline. Invert it. We're starting to get some stuff going on here. Now, these numbers that I'm putting in are numbers that I've found to be pretty good. So there's no how, where, or why, it, it, it's just how it goes. I'm whacking up the complexity as well, so I want a bit more detail because we've got quite a large comp here. And I've found the sublimpulence settings do make quite a bit of difference. So this is the base level of our terrain so far, but we need to add some more ridges. So I'm just gonna duplicate this solid and change it to smeary. Sounds a bit weird, but you'll see why in a second. Because there is a smeary preset. See? This is going to form the basis of our ridge lines between the peaks. So again, most of the settings are the same. Oops, I hate it when that happens. Okay, now one thing is we want this to overlay over the top of our layers and it's not great at doing it with its own internal defaults. You could do it to the layer itself, but one thing I've found the easiest way to do it is just say sod it and use nulls and molt. Boom, there we go, straight over the top. So we're going to put an adjustment layer over this and just call this grade because we're just going to affect the whole thing globally with a bit of exposure just to bring down the gamma a bit. You can see some of the ridge lines between the peaks are now starting to come out. We're just going to, we're going to change the scale of the whole thing in a minute. It looks a bit tight at the moment from what I remember doing before. And one other thing which I couldn't believe I found CC Vector Blur kind of blends everything together a bit. You'll see that in a second. Yeah, that's a bit much. Yeah, I've definitely got to change the scale of the whole thing. Just bear with. I'll whack in my normal settings. So we get some nice ridges going on. But the scale of the scene, of the, sorry, the noise is still too high. Too, too low, sorry. Whack it up to 275 on both. There we go. Now we've got a nice procedural terrain layer. There's our elevation map where the white is high and the black is low. What I'm actually putting here is I'm going to put in a new null called position. And the reason I wanted this whole thing procedural is I wanted to be able to move the terrain around, which you can't really do with it unless you've got a massive um, DEM file. I just wanted to link this offset turbulence to the position of the null so I can just move it, rotate it, and everything's all linked together. We'll see in a second. Just do the offset turbulence in both layers and uh, pick whip that to the position of the new null that you've called position. And just grab the null. There we go. So we can get some nice moves going on here. What I'm now going to do is I actually want these mountains to elevate in height when we open the frame. So the easiest way to do that I found is just to adjust the gamma overall. If you just do an opacity ramp you don't get the same feel because the highlights don't come up first, everything comes up at the same. But if you modify the gamma, there you go, the highlights reveal first. So I'm just going to yeah, ramp that in. 
little bit of ease in. That's all you need. So this is our basis for everything else, the landscape and the contour lines. So what I'm going to do, drag that in, turn off the layer, because you don't need to see it as the link. So we're now, I'm just going to do a background gradient ramp just to bring out the lines and the landscape even more. Bit blue, it's absolutely fine. Fab. Now it's time to make our landscape layer. I'm, I'm not duplicating any of the previous, so I'm just going to make it from scratch. So we're calling this form landscape. Drag it into the stack. I'm actually going to colour it so we, we know where it is later on. Just solo this. And again, XYZ individual. I'm actually going to make this the same width as our pro noise layer. And everything should overlay each other quite nicely, as you'll see later on. And amount of particles, 500 is, is about, is, is going to be in there, you'll see. And again, we're going to have to reduce this, get rid of the feather and particle size down to one. Mm. We've got a nice base layer. So what we're going to do now is use our displacement here. So individual XYZ, map over XZ, because that's how we built it. And the layer for elevation Y, we're picking pro noise. Bear in mind we animated it in. Now, always we have to invert this now. As you'll see, because it looks a bit hummocky, if we invert it, there we go. That's more like our noise layer. Just whack at the strength a bit to like 70. Nice. So straight away, it's almost, almost like a frozen ocean. So just using the camera track tool to pull the camera back a bit. I want to see all of this. Oh, I've got to move my focus point. Let's go into the right hand view. Move the focus distance. Roughly in the middle. There we go. Right. We can see we've got a solid plane when we animate in. We're going to modify that very shortly. We don't want there to be any particles on frame one. We want them to come in. So we do that with a color and alpha layer. We can pick our normal pro noise layer. There we go. So when we animate in, no particles to begin with. It's based on the luminance. Normally we would, to be lazy, just chuck on the hue and saturation just to colorize this. But it only colorizes across the whole um, range of information. And we haven't got that much control really. So I'm just showing you what I would do as a quick and dirty way of colorizing this form. So you can get some nice looking stuff, but I'd rather a bit more sub control over this. Oh yeah, just change the particle overlay, the sub particle's own overlay to itself to screen. It just pumps up those ridges just a small bit as well. Now turn the grid layers on as well so you can see what's happening. And as I mentioned, we don't really want to use hue saturation. So what we're going to do, we're going to duplicate this pro noise layer. 
and just call this Pro Noise Color in caps because I forgot I had caps on. <laughs> so the best way I've found to colorize this kind of image is to use um, the color armor. <clears throat> so I'm just making a new adjustment layer, checking on color armor. Wow. And making a custom output cycle. God, I hate the apple color picker. So we want something quite nice for the mountain peaks and let's pick make a gr gradient of browns. Now we're getting somewhere. Fab. It's all about control. Because bear in mind we can now animate that color armor if we want to. So what we're going to do is bring that in, turn it off, and now link the form landscape layer map of color and alpha to that one instead. Much better, much better. There's a subtleness about it now. Right, what we're doing now is bringing in the Pro Noise layer. We're now about to make the contours. We're actually using our Pro Noise layer for this. So we just bring it in, make it 3D, rotate it 90 degrees to overlay over the our landscape. And we just flick it on and off to make sure we have it aligned with like the light areas of our landscape. Yeah, so that's definitely the right orientation. Now, here was the trick. What we're going to do here is we're going to duplicate this layer a few times. So we're actually going to duplicate it up vertically. Don't copy this just yet. I'll show you what I'm going to do. We're going to parent our duplication to the to our first layer. I'm going to move this up about 12. 12 is about right for this level. But check this out. I found this out yesterday because you cannot align in 3D space, align layers like a stack of layers, like I'm trying to do. Otherwise, I've been trying to do this manually. But as you can see here, look at this can't duplicate, distribute 3D layers. You can buy plugins to do this. But check this out. If you pick whip while holding the Alt key down to the previous layer, look at that. It makes a duplicate of the layer the same amount of pixels higher than before. Look at that. Alt pick whip on the Mac. So you can now distribute evenly in whichever axis you happen to be in. As long as the first one is parented, first duplicate is parented to the original, you can Alt pick whip and stack or distribute in the same orientation as you started with. So we're going up to about 11 or 12 layers here. Let's count them up. One more for luck. There we go, to cover the whole range. All right, let's go back to back to camera. We've got a whole stack of layers. I'm just going to turn all of these off apart from the original one because we're going to work on the original one first and then copy the effects. So what we want to do is go to Threshold. Threshold picks one, you pick one value. So I need at the bottom of the stack to have a pretty low value. Then stylize again. Sorry, I forgot I needed to make it 10. It's about the third time I've done this now. <laughs> so find edges. Straight away, you can see what we're going to do. Look at that. We have some contour lines. Threshold, find edges, and invert. Good old null and malt. 
Here's our first set of contour lines. You'll see that they're quite aliased and sharp, so I just add a little simple choker at a level of one just to soften those edges up a bit, and then bang on a default glow. And that's pretty fine for our purposes. So I'm just going to close all these up so I can select the lot, copy them, and paste them to all of the layers. Right, okay, can you guess what I'm going to do here? So I'm whacking up the threshold 20 levels, increase it by 20 levels for each layer to, to, from the previous layer. So you can see the feedback straight away, we're now getting somewhere. Work our way up the stack. Bosh. Nice. I normally just overlay these on screen anyway you can't see much visual difference but when you, if you change a lot of the colors later on then you will definitely see different so i just leave it on screen as an overlay mode just doing a slow and chunky ram preview now see because this is procedural it affects the contours at the same rate as it affects the landscape and it's all linking to a couple of layers. Essentially one layer, the pro noise layer. Right, we'll just do some embellishments and uh, then we'll nearly be there. Right, what we're going to do now is we're going to animate those grid lines the vertical grid lines which you saw in the original animation that I showed, demoed right at the beginning. So to make those, I'm just going to duplicate that dots layer and call this uprights. So basically we're just changing the amount of pixels or points in Y to give us some verticals. I'm just going to have to play around with these numbers to bring it down to kind of equal the look of the X and Z grids. Yeah, it's the particle size that was causing the issue as well. As you can see, it's running through the, the XYZ plane. So we're just going to shift these up in Y. So they sit on top of the grid. Nice. Great. Yep. That will do. They want less particles. Now, what I want to do is stick dots on the top of these. So I'm just dupl duplicating my dots and moving them up manually in Y so they sit on the top stack. On the top of the vertical, sorry. Great. Yep, spot on. Now we're just going to animate these over the same duration as our landscape animates. So I'm just going to keyframe these and the size. Otherwise, we'll end up with like dots overlaying dots. So I nearly always keyframe the size up as well. Just a standard ease in to match the standard ease in. Now, on the uprights, we're going to animate the size in Y.
and the position over time. So their origin will start at the x, well, yeah, the x, y, z axis. Oh look, I've got a sale at Denelm. Who knew? Easing those keyframes. Great, look at that. That's exactly what I wanted. Turn everything on now and preview that. Fantastic. Just have that extra level of detail just to give it that edge. Always try and find the extra edge when it comes to stuff like this just makes it look awesome. What we're going to do now is animate the positional component of that null that we built originally. I just wanted a couple of motions within our short animation just to show you why I wanted to go the procedural route. I normally animate to the second half and quarter second. It just makes it handy for later on. Because bear in mind, whenever you're animating something, you, there's all, there's always going to be normally an audio bed over it. And if you can animate to those parameters between the second half and quarter of a second, then they'll, they'll hit a beat point every time. And it saves you having to reanimate laser. I'm just playing with the curves here. So we've got sort of acceleration out. And deceleration in. I'm just copying and pasting those to the color layer because bear in mind the color layer is linked as well in form. Yeah, it's a quick copy and paste. And uh, we'll round preview that. Right, I just wanted to do some additional embellishments here. So looking at this I actually wanted to punch up the depth of field even more, so I'm going to double that. Nice. Straight away, improves it tenfold. Always play with your depth of field if you can on this stuff, because it absolutely nails it, it really does. One other thing as well, I wanted to add a, at some of the lowest levels, some lakes. So I'm just going to duplicate like the, the the lowest in the stack noise layer, turn everything off. You can see probably you can probably guess what I'm going to do here to um, to make this work. So just leaving the threshold in, invert the threshold, then lose the find edges, unmalt. Simple choker, yeah, smooth it off a bit. And we can lose the glow as well. Now all we need to do now is a fill layer to give it some colour. So generate fill. Pick a, a blue that you like. Let's have a look. See, straight away. Just gonna whack the opacity down relatively low, about halfway. Nice and subtle, but it just adds that extra level to the lowest parts of the terrain. The only thing we have to do here is, as you can see, if we slide this, oh, there's our animation of our positions. But we don't want the water to flood the scene on the opening frame, we want the water to appear. So it's just a case of playing around with uh, threshold levels. As you can see there, you can take them down into minus levels. So we just need to keyframe those threshold levels just so they come in. Yeah, they're just animating over time, over only about six frames. That's all we want to get us what we need.
There we go. Looking great. So we have the grid animating, contours animating, the landscape animating, the lakes coming up. It's a great start for you. And uh, I think this pretty much nails it without the use of additional plugins. There are, uh, there are plugins that will give you contour lines. Uh, there's one on AE scripts called Topograph. I actually brought it and tried it out, but it, yeah, no, it's fine. It's quite slow, but this is much more procedural. And if you understand how something works, like this with threshold and find edges and unmolt, then it allows you a bit more creativity. And um, that's the way I looked at it anyway, because you've only got to duplicate the layer a few times to give you a stack of contour lines, and everything's all linked back to that pro noise layer. So, yeah, I'd rather have the control, because let's face it, if you've got an art director sitting behind you and they say, oh, sorry, can you just move that over there? You can do that. Um, if you use the non-procedural way, you might be in trouble. So I'd rather have control. It's all about control when it comes to this stuff. Anyway, I hope you've uh, learned something from watching this. Um, fantastic. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Great stuff. Cheers, guys.